Ida for telling my kids they can be pissed at their dad, but if they want me to choose between them and their sister, they're going to be very disappointed? Mom, you can't seriously be okay with this, Ben's voice crackles through the speaker, frustration thick in his tone. You know what dad did. I rub my temples, feeling the dull headache that's been brewing since the argument started. My living room is quiet except for the soft ticking of the wall clock, but my mind is a storm. I glance at the photo of all three of my kids on the mantel Ben, Claire, and Mia frozen in a moment of sibling harmony that seems eons ago. How did we get here? I knew this conversation was inevitable, but I wasn't ready. Ben, I say slowly, trying to keep my voice calm, I get why you're upset. I do. But this isn't about taking sides. Yes, it is. He interrupts, his voice rising. You're always trying to play peacekeeper, but this is different. What dad did to Claire, it's unforgivable. And now you're just going to let Mia stand by him? You can't just let her be part of this mess. I sigh, biting back my response. This isn't just about their dad. This is about the mess of our family, the tangled web of love, resentment, and years of unspoken hurts. You're not asking me to take a side, Ben. You're asking me to choose between my kids, I say quietly, and I can almost hear him seething on the other end. It all started about a year ago, when everything felt like it was on the brink of collapse. Our family had always been functional, if not a little dysfunctional, but manageable. My ex-husband, Greg, and I had always had our share of issues, but the kids were the glue that held us together, until they weren't. After the divorce, I thought we'd hit rock bottom, but no, that came later when Greg made a mistake so big, it tore the whole family apart. It was Claire who bore the brunt of it. Greg had promised her the world when she got into her dream college, helped her plan for it, even bragged to all his friends about how proud he was. But then, right before tuition was due, he gambled away the money. Every penny of it. Claire was devastated, humiliated. She had to defer her acceptance, pick up extra jobs, and try to make things work on her own. Greg, of course, apologized, tried to make amends, but the damage was done. And just like that, a line was drawn. Ben and Claire, always the closest, were furious. They cut their dad off, refused to speak to him, and distanced themselves from the chaos he'd created. But Mia? Mia, the youngest, the one who always saw the best in everyone, didn't. She stayed by Greg's side, convinced he could change, that he could make things right. That's when the real fractures began. Ben thought Mia was being naive. Claire saw it as betrayal. The two of them closed ranks, convinced that Mia was just enabling their dad's behavior, while Mia tried to argue that forgiveness was more important than holding on to anger. Now, every family gathering feels like walking into a war zone. Claire won't speak to Mia. Ben's short-tempered with everyone. And I'm stuck in the middle, trying to hold it all together without losing myself in the process. Mom? Ben's voice pulls me back to the present. You're not seriously going to defend Mia, are you? I'm not defending anyone, I say. But I'm not choosing between you and your sister. I love all three of you. That's never going to change. But she's on dad's side. Ben explodes. She's, she's part of the problem. I can feel the tension building in my chest, the frustration of trying to explain something so nuanced to someone so blinded by hurt. Ben, I say carefully, Mia's not taking sides. She's trying to make sense of things in her own way, just like you and Claire are. She's allowed to have her own feelings about dad. She's allowed to be wrong, Ben mutters, and I can't help but roll my eyes. This is the problem. Every conversation with Ben and Claire comes down to the same thing loyalty. They see everything in black and white, as if there's a right and wrong way to handle the mess that Greg created. But life isn't that simple. Family isn't that simple. I love my kids fiercely. I've spent years putting them first, sacrificing, bending over backward to make sure they had everything they needed. But this? This demand for me to take sides, to sever ties with one of them to prove my loyalty to the others? That's where I draw the line. Later that evening, when the house is quiet again, Mia comes home. She looks exhausted, her backpack slung over her shoulder as she drops it by the door. Her hair's a little messy, and there's a faint smudge of ink on her hand she's always writing, always doodling ideas for her latest art project. Hey, mom, she says softly, clearly sensing the tension in the air. How's Ben? I hesitate, not sure how much to share. He's, he's upset. Mia nods, biting her lip. Because of dad, right? Yeah. She sinks onto the couch, pulling her knees up to her chest. I don't know why it has to be this way, she whispers, her voice cracking. I don't know why they hate me for not hating him. I sit down beside her, placing a hand on her shoulder. They don't hate you, Mia. They're just angry. Angry at dad. Angry at the situation. They're not thinking straight. 
but it feels like they're asking me to choose, mom, she says, tears welling up in her eyes. And I can't. I can't hate him, even though I know what he did was wrong. Does that make me a bad person? No, I say firmly. It doesn't. She leans into me, resting her head on my shoulder. I just want us to be a family again. I don't know how to answer that. I don't know if we'll ever be the family we once were. But I do know one thing I'm not going to let this tear us apart completely. A few days later, Ben and Claire show up at the house for a family dinner. It's tense from the moment they walk in. Claire barely looks at Mia, and Ben's jaw is set, his arms crossed like he's ready for a fight. I try to keep things light, serving up spaghetti and garlic bread, making small talk about work and the weather. But it doesn't take long for the tension to boil over. So, Mia, Claire says, her voice dripping with sarcasm. How's dad? Mia freezes, her fork halfway to her mouth. She glances at me, as if asking for help, but I know I can't step in this time. They need to have this out. He's, okay, Mia says carefully. Trying to get back on track. Claire snorts, shaking her head. Right. Because that worked so well the first time. That's not fair, Mia says quietly. He's trying. People make mistakes, Claire. Yeah, and some mistakes are unforgivable. There's a heavy silence at the table. I can feel it, the weight of all the things unsaid, pressing down on all of us. This is it. This is the moment I've been dreading. Enough, I say, my voice firm but calm. I get that you're upset, Claire. Ben, I know you're angry. But this? This has to stop. Claire looks at me, her eyes narrowing. So, you're defending her? No, I say, meeting her gaze. I'm telling you that I love all three of you, and I'm not going to choose between you. You can be pissed at your dad, you can be angry with the choices Mia's made, but if you expect me to take sides and cut one of you off, you're going to be very disappointed. Ben slams his hand on the table. Mom, this isn't just some sibling fight. Dad ruined her future. And I'm not excusing what he did, I say, trying to keep my voice steady even though my heart is pounding. But this isn't about him. This is about us. This is about whether or not we let what he did tear this family apart. Claire stands up, her chair scraping loudly against the floor. I can't believe you're doing this. I'm not doing anything, I say, looking at her, at Ben, at Mia. I'm telling you that I'm not choosing. I won't. I can't. You're my kids. All of you. And if you want me to choose between you, I won't. So, if that's what you need from me, I'm sorry, but I'm not the mom for that. For a moment, no one speaks. Claire's face is flushed with anger, Ben looks like he's on the verge of saying something harsh, and Mia's sitting there, wide-eyed and silent. I've never felt more terrified of what might come next, but I also know it had to be said. Finally, Claire shakes her head, grabbing her coat. I need to go. Ben follows her out, not saying another word, and the door slams behind them, leaving me and Mia in the sudden quiet. I sit back down, feeling the weight of everything that's happened settle over me like a blanket. Mia watches me, her eyes filled with uncertainty. Did I do the right thing? She asks quietly. I look at her, my youngest, the one who's always believed in the best in people, even when it's hard. And I realize that maybe this is what we all need a little more grace, a little more understanding. I don't know, I admit. But I think we'll figure it out. And for the first time in months, I feel a flicker of hope. Maybe we will.